Hey guys, it is Damak here and welcome back to a brand new video. Today we're here for my first video on FIFA 20. Now this game's just come out a few hours ago with EA Access. I've managed to cop it, um, albeit paying a bit for it. But uh, anyway, we've got it now. We're going to start our career mode, our yearly career mode. And this one will go a bit uh, further into the series than the previous two. I promise you that. Now, I did put a poll in the YouTube community bit, uh, but... The first one had four teams in it and the top two teams went into a final vote. These teams were either Norwich or Sheffield United and the team that I will be doing my career mode with, you've seen it in the title, it is Sheffield United, the newly promoted team into the Premier League, oh, well along with Norwich but uh, we decided to go with them. I think it was a majority vote as well by quite a bit so um, hopefully hopefully we can, we can do this. So let's go in and create our manager. But also guys, if you could hit that like button and subscribe to the channel, it would mean a lot to me, it would be greatly appreciated. And also let me know down in the comments below who I should sign for this season with Sheffield United. So here is our manager, obviously Daniel McDonald from Scotland as the previous years. I've just gone and given a bit of an edit there, not too much, a little bit of facial hair, my, can my current hairstyle kind of, but not on the sides, I'm not that short on the side, it looks dead on the sides there, but... I've tried to make it look like myself a little bit. I'm not going to try and import my face anyway. So we're going to advance. Obviously, we're not with Newcastle. We are with Sheffield United. It was between Norwich or Sheffield United. So with Norwich, uh, as you can see there, there's better finances. With Sheffield United, there's a bit less of a transfer budget, six million less. Uh, we're going to go anyway with Sheffield United. It was the highest voted in both the polls I did. I made one with four teams, and then I made one with two teams. And they came out winners both times. Obviously, just being promoted from the championship first time in the Premier League for many many years anyway so we've got a transfer budget of 17 million club worth of just under 300 million and um, yeah the board expectations very low on domestic and continental obviously with the first year in the Premier League you're not going to expect much from your team uh, they don't expect much for brand exposure but we're going to try that anyway financial is critical obviously for a small club just come up from the championship they're going to need a lot of finance uh, management and youth development is medium so it's kind of key to one of these clubs obviously with 17 million in the budget you can't really spend too much on really good players you need to try and grow them up from the youth team so we're going to choose Sheffield United and this is what we will be running on anyway um, since it is the trial I'm going to move the half length just a little bit less just to save a little bit of time but um, other than that it should be fine so obviously there's the annual FIFA uh, pre-season tournament invite at the start of the Kramer. We're not going to do that. We're just going to head straight into the Premier League. Uh, don't really want to do any pre-season stuff right now. So let's look at the players we'll have. We have 40 players in the squad total so far. We have Dean Henderson on loan. I believe he's on loan from Manchester United. He's a really good keeper. Uh, we've got five goalkeepers. Uh, we might need to loan some out actually because obviously Johnny Spood, oh he's at Scunthorpe but we've got four that aren't so we might need to loan, we're going to put Marcus Dewhurst on the loan list right now because I don't see him playing anyway, I mean Moore and Verips they'll probably be playing a bit more in the cup games and stuff so we've got 14 defenders as you'd expect, some of them are on loan though. Our highest rated centre back is Phil Jagielka or highest rated uh, defender. Um, 76 rated so we might need to try and grow some of these players up we've got Ollie McBurney who does play for Scotland although he's uh, not really performed for the national team but he's performed quite well for Sheffield United so far this season anyway in the proper Premier League Lee Moose we had him last year at the Bournemouth career mode I believe it was I didn't really go that far with that one but for this one I'm promising to go a bit further than six episodes I think it was so Lise Moussa he obviously joins he's following us so far in this uh, career mode series anyway Billy Sharp uh, main man we're quite old players here at uh, Sheffield we've got quite a lot of strikers as well just trying to go through we've got all as you can see there we've got a lot of players in their 30s and most of them are kind of the best players in the squad uh, we've got a few that are quite young but uh, we need more younger players in here. We've got not many and then there's 22 years old. They're not very good rated either. So we need to go and try and get more players. But anyway, look at the value. We've got some players at 8 million. Ravel Morrison, Dean Henderson, Ollie McBurney. They're all over 7 million. But then if you look, we've got a lot of the young players are also very 
super cheap, so we need to try and do something with loaning them or uh, selling them on. Avoid relegation in the Premier League, that is obviously our target. We don't want to go back down to the Championship. Reach around a 32 in the FA Cup, that should be possible. But financially, we need to reduce the player wages by 45,000 a week and finish the season with a profit margin of 67.5 million. Now, that might be a bit of a struggle, but the rest of this is just squad reports, so we could just go through that. Right then, so straight away we're going to go for some youth staff. We're going to hire quite a cheap one. We can't really spend the budget too much. We'll go for Hugh Jackson. He's quite cheap, but he's not obviously the worst. So we're going to just go for a scout network in England. Just obviously we don't want to send him too far. 96 grand for three months. He'll come back with so hopefully some talent that we can put in the youth squad. So he can go there. We're obviously down on her profit now, but... Hopefully that should be fine. So anyway, let's look at the calendar for the first month. So obviously skipping July, going into August, we have Bournemouth as our first game, Crystal Palace, Leicester City and Chelsea. It's quite a hard first month to be fair, but we should be able to handle it. So we're just going to reject that offer for now. I don't really want to sell any of the main players right now. You guys can let me know down in the comments below uh, what who to sell and who to buy. Uh, you guys probably have a better knowledge than me. But yeah, if you want to let me know down in the comments who I should sign for this transfer window, I'll probably play two games and then I'll leave the rest for the next episode. So if you want to let me know who I should sign for the future. We're going to go into our first game here against Bournemouth. I don't have much to do. I could have done some training, but I decided not to just for now. We've got another transfer offer for Chris Basham. We're not going to sell him until I get the approval from you. So into our first game against Bournemouth, we've got... A press conference I haven't are these new I think they're new we're gonna go into this then and see what we can do so there Thank is patience, our manager we'll taking questions now. Oh, yes we can obviously win the relegation battle the reporters just been stupid there why would I why would why would I say that we're not gonna get uh, that we're not gonna stay up well, what's the point in saying oh yeah we're gonna get relegated uh, right, so this is another one that's talking about new signings. So let me know in the comments who you want me to sign and if they're good enough. But uh, I don't know if we'll if we'll buy some new players. Uh, we're all good all over the pitch. We'll see what we can do. Let me know in the comments, and I should I will have a look at them as soon as this video goes live, and I will see who you want me to sign and all that. It'd be good if I have my okay, name guys, though instead of manager, but Thank you very much can't really complain. Here we are for our first Premier League match at the Vitality Stadium against AFC Bournemouth. We're away from home, just as I said a moment ago, and the teams are now coming out the tunnel. So for the first game here, I'm just going to go play my normal style, just as you do. I usually play along the wings, so that's why I've gone for a 4-5-1. I think it is it was a 4-4-1-1, but I like to play along the wings, so that's what I've gone for with this formation. But... Um, Hopefully Bournemouth won't put too much of a fight up against us and just leave it an easy game, but uh, as long as it's exciting. So Bournemouth are starting with Travers and goals. Stacey, Simpson, Cordner and Kelly are the back four today. Ibe, Butcher, Obor and Dobre are in the midfield. I don't know how, how to pronounce them, the last two names. King is in the centre forward position and obviously the debutante William Jose is up top. For ourselves, Sheffield United, we've got Henderson and goals with Baldock, O'Connell, Egan and Evans, the back four. The midfield consists of Lundstrom, Fleck, Norwood and Freeman. And it is a 4-4-1-1 we're playing today as Robertson is in the cam position. And Ollie McBurney is up, up top. So William Jose will be getting our Premier League campaign underway for Sheffield United. The first time we've played in the Prem for a long time. So let's get underway as Bournemouth are already trying to attack into our half King tries to switch he actually has switched it quite well into Jordan Nibe Stevens wins the ball back and now we can try play the possession game and out wide because that's my kind of play style playing out wide as that ball is nearly messed up there we've kept it going though we've won it back Bulldog finds Lundstrom who can play into Robinson Ollie McBurney does what he does best for Scotland and that is not making a run at all he plays over the top though to Freeman who's actually collected the ball quite well into the box comes Freeman Stacey tries to tackle him it's actually 
but I don't know what's going on here. Stacey kicked it into his own box. It deflected off Freeman, and now the ball's gone out for a throw-in. Fleck whips it into the box. Who's on the end of it? William Jose is on the end of it. Lindstrom now cross it into the box. That was a poor cross. Lindstrom again into the back post. Stacey's on it once again. Jordan Nye, Butcher clears only as far as Norwood down this far side who can't beat King to the header. And uh, thankfully for Bournemouth, they've actually managed to clear their lines. Actually, they're having a bit of a mess here at the back, but uh, Jordan Ibe sorts that out into William Jose, but unfortunately he's not able to get the ball, not able to be quick enough, as that is a very poor pass here from our defence, and now Dobre is on the ball, he plays it over the top, into Jordan King, Henderson doesn't catch it, he pushes it out for a corner kick, and this is a very dangerous one, 30 minutes into the half, we're a third of the way through the game, Jordan Ibe whips the ball in, that looks like it may have gone out on the cross, but now we've tried to clear it away. It's not really worked, but Ollie McBurney can actually make a run for once, but it's when we're controlling him. We've only got one player up, and Ollie McBurney is trying his best. He's been tackled there, but Baldock has been played it through over the top now. It's not able to beat the Bournemouth defence. They've actually, it looks like they're playing a bit defensive here compared to ourselves. It's actually into Robinson, who might be able to make a run. Ollie McBurney, as you can see there, this is what he does in Scotland. I'd I can't believe they've put this into the game. Ollie McBurney finally trying to make a run, but it's a wrong one. And we have been dispossessed once again. Actually, no, we haven't. Ollie McBurney wins the ball, but Travers is out of his goal. Like a shot to collect it. As we're just on the stroke of half time. Two minutes added on. Robinson wins the ball back. And now Bournemouth may be under attack. Lindstrom can play it wide into Robinson. We've got absolutely nobody in the box. Robinson whips it in. That's a lovely ball into Norwood, who's actually gotten the end of it. But it's gone past the post. And that is half time in this game. Norwood with the final chance of the half. And it's 0 0 going into the second half. We have a lot of work to do. Bournemouth seem to be pressing us a lot more than they should be. We should be being able to control the midfield, but unfortunately, that has not been able to happen. So the first half was very boring. Each side had only one shot on goal and zero shots on target for either team. So Fleck is now attacking, he can play the ball through into Ollie McBurney, he's not quick enough to get on the, but actually Travers comes out his goal with the ball and was able to collect it quite well. Fleck plays out wide to Lundstrom, Lundstrom can now play it through into Ollie McBurney, he's actually made a run now, McBurney has a shot saved by Travers. He parries it, but he's able to collect it once again as Ollie McBurney gets her first shot on target, albeit not in the back of the net. But Robinson once again finds McBurney. McBurney on the edge of the box. He's going to have a shot himself over the bar for Ollie McBurney. He's ever so close, but still not close enough. Another man to watch out for for ourselves is Ryan Fraser. Into the box it goes. Henderson's out to collect, and now we can counter-attack on this play. It's fallen to McBurney. He can play it down to Fleck. Fleck with a lovely ball through to Lindstrom there. Lindstrom tries to play it through, but it's, oh, what is that? What actually is that from Lundstrom? It's, uh, it was a nice counter-attack, and then that happened. So now the ball, Ryan Fraser, down this left-hand side. He's got the burst of pace. He's fresh on the pitch. He's into the box. And, oh my word, we're 1-0 down. I, the guy, I could not pronounce his name in, in last series, and I can't pronounce his name now. Ofo, I'm just going to call him Ofo. He puts it in the back of the net with a header. It hit the post. And it went into the back of the net. As you can see, Ryan Fraser, the Scott, running down the left wing, crosses it in. And Ofo just beats the defender. Dean Henderson is there, stranded, unable to get the ball. A lovely play by Bournemouth, but unfortunately, I wanted it to be us scoring the first goal. But um, we need to work now, so I think we're going to make some changes in the 68th minute. So after that, we're going to bring off Ollie McBurney, who's... I had a few shots, but he's been unable to convert them. We've brought on the man that did help us many a time in the Bournemouth series, and that is Elise Mousse. We've brought him up up top. Hopefully it can help us as he's on the ball now. He plays the ball through into Robinson now. Robinson cuts back, cross in, back post into Norwood. And what, what, what did I say? Elise Mousse has done wonders for us, and there we go. We've got the equaliser now. Lee Smith played a bit in the build up there. Lovely ball into Robinson, who turned, crossed it in back post, and Norwood was there to put it in, just put it in back post, shall I say. 
but I'm very happy with that. I, I mean, I'm not as hyped as I should be, but we're 1-1. If it was to score the first goal of the game, I would be delighted, but we're back in the game now, thanks to that sub, I'd say, but Robinson played a part there. Isn't it typical, as soon as we bring Ollie McBurney off, this is what happens. And I think the Scottish striker is just a bit of a curse, really, for Scotland in proper football and on, on the series so far. It's actually Moussa. Look at that. Look at that. He's won the ball back and he's played it down into Lundstrom. Now, lovely ball. Fleck can find Moussa himself. Moussa can hold it up and can play it through to Robertson. Robertson out to Freeman. Rob Freeman actually beats his man. Into the box from Freeman. Simpson clears just though it's gone out for a throw in. 13 minutes left of this match. They've brought Lerma on the pitch though. Jefferson Lerma as King just beats his man. That's actually a ball through. He's onside as William Jose. They've got two on one here. King once again saved by Dean Henderson. Can we get that away? No, we can't. No, we cannot. <sighs> I can't believe it. We were looking so good and that happened. Dean Henderson unable to put the shot over the bar. It was just that perfect through ball for William Jose. And unfortunately, I think it was Stevens who wasn't able to push Josh King out the way. And scores his first goal of the season and probably to win. And as soon as he scores that, he's coming off. I can't believe it, really. Stacey wins it. Stevens on the ball. It's now Musse. Back into Freeman. Now leaves Musse and again into the box from Musse. And it's just gone straight into Travers' hands. It looks like we're going to lose it for it is. It doesn't look like uh, it's confirmed. We've lost the first game of this career mode. And it was such a boring one until the 68th minute where the player that I call Ofo took the lead for Bournemouth. We got a goal back straight away with Norwood, I believe it was, the captain. But uh, in the end, it wasn't enough. Josh King put the ball in the back of the net once again with a header on the line. And uh, unfortunately, it is a loss for our first game. We're pretty much equal, look at that. Four shots each, two shots on target each, 50% possession. They, we had one more tackle than them. Yes, I just said that we are disappointed that we failed to start the campaign with a positive result. It wasn't good enough, I'm just going to say that. I mean, it puts uh, team morale down a bit, but... It wasn't good enough. We should be doing better. I mean, we, I know we've just been promoted, but we need to we need to up the game a little bit from that. Bournemouth managed to score the winner during the last minutes of the very tight game. Uh, it's, it is just unlucky, though, to be fair, that they did that. I mean, the goal was very lucky uh, that Dean Henderson wasn't able to tip over the bar and then it just dropped just under the crossbar. But what can you do? Yeah, there we go. In the news, all important. King goals settles Sheffield United defeat is unfortunate to be honest so we've done some training there uh, I don't know if I can go back onto it before the next game against Crystal Palace and uh, after the last game I'm kind of thinking I might change the lineup a bit I don't think I'm going to start McBurney this time as well just because in the first half he just wasn't making the runs needed and we're at home this time against Crystal Palace so we actually need to be on form here today so we're going to change the team up just a bit just slightly Bramall Lane welcomes the Premier League with open arms today as it hosts its first Premier League match in many, many years against Crystal Palace today. So we're, as you can see there, as we're exiting the tunnel, we're running with the same, near enough the same lineup. But after the first game, I have made some changes. As you can see here, the Sheffield United lineup. Henderson starts in goals with Baldock, Jagielka, Egan and Stevens at the back. Jagielka comes in for O'Connell. Ravel Morrison starts on... The right wing with Flake, Norwood and Freeman also in the midfield. Robinson stays in the cam position and Lise Mousse gets a start up top. I've moved McBurney to the bench. I can't handle him anymore to start. The Crystal Palace lineup. Then Hennessy starts in goals with Ward, Taveres, Woods and Van Anholt at the back. Van Anholt, we need to watch out for him. Lokilo, Dreyer, McGregor and Kirby are in the midfield for Crystal Palace. As Ayu and Daly start up top. They do have Sa and Sacco on the bench as well. Crystal Palace do, so we need to watch out for the subs. As we're getting ready to hopefully impress the home supporters today. We do get kickoff today. And 
it will be Musa kicking us underway for the first Premier League match at this ground in a very, very long time. Jagielka on the ball for his first touches of this campaign as well. Played it back into Norwood. Norwood holds the ball up. He's going to play it through into Freeman now. Freeman down this left-hand side. Into the box. Freeman oh, just cleared away by Woods in the six-yard box. Four minutes into the match. And we're already causing some troubles. We just need to control it. Obviously, we're at home. We've got the advantage. We need to control it, though, as we can actually see a run here. Norwood plays the ball through into Lise Musse. Can we do the damage in front of our home crowd? Lise Musse. Oh, that is such a poor shot. I keep double tapping instead of powering it, but uh, Lise Musse, unfortunate there, not to put it, not to put the home side 1 0 up, but uh, we'll forgive him for now. As Ravel Morrison with another, that was, a, that was a dodgy pass, but he's made it work. Norwood into Freeman. Norwood tries to find McGregor, blocks though. Jagielka gets absolutely put to the ground by, I think that was Jordan Ayew, but nothing's come of it yet. They've not pulled it back, so I. I'm guessing that's okay if we just take out every player then. Daly can find Jordan Ayew. We're not going to let him cut inside. We're going to let him have a shot like that on the left foot. And it goes wide of Dean Henderson's net. That's what we want. Just kind of keep him on the outside there. As Freeman once again plays the ball through into Lee Musa. He's actually got some players into the box, Musa does. He's going to cut back. He's going to cross it himself. But that is such a poor cross. Everyone didn't expect him to cut back. But they're still running into the six-yard box. But Robinson on the ball now. He can find Fleck. Fleck from there to the box. He's going to try and have a lucky shot. It's deflected and cleared away. As Robinson can find the ball through into Norwood. The goal scorer from the last game has a shot. Wayne Hennessy just gets a tip of his fingers onto it. And he can. That's actually dodgy play. That's a pass back. But I don't think FIFA does pass backs there. Wayne Hennessy can clear up the pitch. Norwood is going to play it into the box. It's a bit wide. Egan gets on the header. It falls back into Ward, who can clear it away. Fleck is on the ball, though. Jagielka can find Freeman. Running into the box. Freeman straight at Hennessy. That is a good save from Hennessy with the power of the shot. Very well played to, to save that. But Jagielka has won the ball back. Can play it through into Robinson. Robinson from there to the box. He's actually... Oh, he's put it wide. I was going to say, he's actually made it past the defence with that run. Bringing the through ball through, but... Uh, just put it wide away in Hennessy's net. We've had so many more shots in Crystal Palace so far, I believe. As you can see, I'm going to show the stats. I never usually show the stats at half time, but look at this. We've had six more shots than them. They haven't even had a shot on target. We've had five. We're just unable to find the back of the net. So hopefully the second half does bring a bit more fortune to ourselves, especially in front of the home crowd. Plays it inside, but it gets intercepted. Morrison out wide once again with a lovely pass out wide. It's just been kept in, inside, from Baldock into Fleck, edge of the box, Wayne Hennessy tips that away from goal as well. I honestly think he's going to be man of the match, and is that Zaha I just saw there? It is indeed, Zaha is coming on for Daly, so we need to make a goal happen as soon as possible, because they're going to be all over us as Jordan Ayew is on the ball, we cannot let him squid it into Zaha. Uh, and that's what he's done there, and he's offside. Thank goodness for that. I saw him outpacing out, out the uh, defender, and I thought, I cannot believe this. Obviously going to cause havoc to our defence, and he has done so there. Zaha's away. Oh, don't let him cross it in. Henderson with a terrific save there. Oh, that's a lovely ball out to Van Aanholt. That is a dodgy cross. So right on top of Dean Henderson, that is not a dodgy cross at all. That was well executed there. But we are going to make two subs. Morrison and Robinson are coming off for Freeman and McGoldrick. Hopefully to change the outcome of this match. I whips the ball into the box though. Zaha, look at that. Inside into Freeman. We can have a ball through into McGoldrick. He's taking a touch. He's going to hit it with the left foot. Hennessy once again with a save. We literally cannot get past Wayne Hennessy right now. He's the only reason Crystal Palace are not... Uh, at least two goals down right now as Lokilo gets the ball and can clear it away. Oh, that's a tackle. That is a tackle. We've got one last attack. It's the 89th minute. And that's a ball up to Lise Musse. Musse's on the ball. Look at that. That is such a poor pass. We've not been able 
to make the passes stick so far as Kuyate is on the ball. We've not got much time. I think that's going to be full time, actually. We can have one more attack as, no, we can't. That is full time. And the match, sadly for you, ends goalless. We've got our first point in the Premier League, though. But it would could have been more exciting. But Wayne Hennessy, surely man of the match in this game. I'd say surely man of the match. He has kept them in it. So let's look at the match facts. We've only had two shots in that second half, one of them on target. They only had two shots as well, and two of them were on target, but it wasn't good enough for either team. They just had more possession, but we need to be doing better than that. Player ratings though, who got man of the match? It was Wayne Hennessy, I told you. I told you, Wayne Hennessy got man of the match, 7.4 rate. Let's look, he made eight saves today. Dean Henderson made five, but Wayne Hennessy was the main shot stopper today. For our next game, we are again at our home ground, hoping to show them our first win in the Premier League this campaign. So let me know down in the comments below how I can improve this series, if there's any signings you want me to make, if there's any way I can make the videos more entertaining for you. And if you say gameplay, then uh, I'm sorry, but <laughs> I'm not that good at FIFA yet. But um, anyways, that's all we can say. Let me know as well if I can sell any of the players, if I'm allowed to, because I don't want to sell any, because in case I get slated. So let me know if I'm allowed to sell any of these players. I've put one of the keepers, I can't remember who it was, I think it was Dewhurst. I put him on the loan list for now. But anyway guys, thank you ever so much for watching. Please like and subscribe for more of my Sheffield United career mode. Obviously this will be more frequent since I've got EA access. I'll be trying to put them out as frequently as possible until the game comes out and then I can do more uploads. Obviously I'm on a time limit, limit right now. But anyway guys, thank you ever so much. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys next time.